okay? Your, your willingness, okay, somehow determines your attitude towards a particular task. All right? Um, the, the approach you take to study determines your attitude towards it. Now, ask yourself, what is your attitude towards learning? What is your attitude towards becoming a successful person? Sometimes your behavior is very, very, very uncompromising. Like I said before, some of you do not know why you are schooling. You think that, you see, your parents brought you to the world, and every day they say go to school. And you will be going to school, ah, up to now. You don't even know what you're going to do with education. What was that you did? You did from a book, yeah. Now, look, have a purpose in mind. That is why you need to have the right behavior and intellectual capacity. What we do to become successful is not for people who are dumb. Okay? It's not for people who are slow to think. This is for people who have the capacity. And you know the beautiful thing? The beautiful thing is that if you have ever gone through education to this level, then your intellectual capacity, what we call intelligent quotient, is way beyond 70 when we calculate it. Those whose intelligent quotient is way below 70 are the ones who cannot go beyond class 3. Do you remember your classmates who dropped in class 3? Because it was difficult for them. Yes, we have the educable, the mentally retarded, the profoundly, severely mentally retarded people. You are not one of them. You are normal and exceptional children. So God has endowed you with every capacity, intellectual capacity, to be successful. But how do we do that? You need to go through what we call true education. What I'm going to say, some of you might not like it, but anyway, you have to go through it. You know one beautiful thing I saw this afternoon when I arrived here on campus? No. I saw you go down the steep, I mean that's very uh, a steep slope, get to the base of the mountain, okay, and fetch water. Keep them in buckets over your head and climb all the way to the top. So, wow! This is beautiful. Trust me, I enjoyed it so much. College. I was old, okay, training college, learning to become a teacher. And uh, there is always a perennial water shortage in Ophoria. So we have to go searching for water. And sometimes we have to trek or walk for about six kilometers, seven kilometers to get a gallon of water huh? to be brought to our dormitories. So when I saw you going through that, I said, wow, it gives me nostalgia. I mean, it makes me look back to when I was as uh, young as you are now. It is good for you. I'll tell you why. <laughs> but before I say that, you know, do you know my hometown? My hometown is Bedrock. There is no place in Bedrock that is not mountainous. All right, like this place. And we have to always descend down the valley to fetch water. Don't complain. But anyway, when we talk about true education, it's what that develops the human agent created in the image of God in mental, moral, and physical powers. So you need the mental capacity. Those are the intellectual work you're doing in the classrooms. Okay? Then you need the moral uprightness. Those are the ones you do in the church. Then you need the physical development. That is climbing 
all the way here with the bucket over your head. And you do that how many times in a, in a day? This is, this is, this is a very special exercise. If you receive any education where you are not given physical training, physical education, that is flawed. What it means is that you turn out to be a weakling. Somebody who is weak. Intellectually, they are good, but you know that they fall sick. Hmm? They don't have good health. Let me tell you, when man sinned in the Garden of Eden, God put us to work. Okay? God said we will work to survive. So if you don't work, you will die. Are you aware of that? Oh, young people, I can tell you to do an experiment when you go home. For one full month, eat and sleep. Eat and sleep. Eat and sleep. I promise you, in one month, you will have hypertension, you will have diabetes, you will have brain tumor, you will have all the terrible diseases in the world. So you eat and sleep without working, without doing any work. You will fall sick. You will get all the chronic diseases that will stay forever with you. So it is very, very important that you exercise. It's also part of education. So when you're giving a piece of land to read, don't complain. If you are made to go to the field to run around, play, some of you don't want to play at all. It is good for you. And that is what is going to give you true education or balanced education. That's what we say. You know, at a university, it's compulsory for every student to do P, right? If you're trained as a minister, you, you will farm. At Valley University, we do true education. Now, Successful students are always responsible and uh, very active. There are some of you who don't want to take responsibility at all. Anytime there is going to be work, there is going to be tax, you see them pushing back. Not me, not me. Okay? That's a terrible thing. If you want to be successful, you should be responsible. How do your teachers tax you? They will give you exercise to do. And you know the irresponsible ones who say, Kale, yena, yena means to make me to me a ya mami. Hmm? Me de, nasi de, me, te kura. Upu mami a kabe me de pa. Upu de okra, na me suma ke so numa Uh oh. You will never be successful if you want to be a copycat. Okay? So, be very active. Alright? Um, don't, don't, don't normally stay so bored. Sometimes some people come to the class and when they're pushing them, you see the way they will be turning, they will be fidgeting in the desk. So boring. So boring. If you're so boring like that, you can never learn. How do you say I'm very active? I'm being bored. Okay? And listen with rapid attention. That is how you can achieve. Okay? So whenever you come to the classroom, for your teachers to, to teach you, don't sit so like a desk. Alright? Lousy. I'm sorry about the word that I have to do. Okay? How about you? Yes. Um, I remember when we were in 
he asked us the same question. When you grow, what would you become? I remember I would jump out of my seat and say, I will become a pilot. And you get food. Who do you want to do that? So I don't want to do that. Who do you want to say? Before I enter, I say, Who do you want to do that? And I don't want to do that. And I don't want to do that. And I don't want to do that. 